previously on Frame by Frame. Oh, my head. If you don't know this from the last um, episode, um, we've been abducted by the Spice Girls. I found a light switch. Oh! Oh my god. There's, oh my god, are there's the, bodies. They're the Backstreet Boys. Didn't the Spice Girls have an irrational fear of the Backstreet Boys? They did. I think I've got an idea. If we sort of take, if we take two of the the ones that aren't as badly disfigured, skin them, and wear their flesh onto on our faces, we we could conceivably scare the Spice Girls and escape. Yes. So, so they'll be like risen from the dead. I think it's a genius idea. I it's, think... it's the best thing I've heard in a long time. Yeah. Out of I've... all the ideas I've ever had, this is my this favorite. Is the, this is best. This is the one. So... Right. Let's do this. Okay. Have we got a knife. Oh, I've got one here. This is disgusting. Oh. Oh. Oh, can we just put some air pressures? Oh, this is really bad. Oh! Right, run! Slow! Hi, Spice! Oh, Ginger's going after you! Oh, oh, she's got the keys! She's got the keys! Run! Run! Daylight! I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Stephen, we... Shut up, I'm trying to sleep. Oh, sorry. I'm just... You know, this, this harmonica that we stole from that Girl Scout camp is just really, really good, and it's taking my mind off what we've just been through. Yeah, but you can't play it. I know. I'm, I'm an early learner. Come on, how long did it take you to play the play the um, the guitar, the banjo, whatever? About <laughs> ten years. <laughs> exactly. So I'm on day one. We've just been liberated from our incarceration. But obviously, we thought we might, we might as well talk about this, but we had no batteries, did we? So we were yes. trying to find the shop, but luckily we come across like a Girl Scout camp. Yeah. And we saw some batteries from there and we saw how they made a, a fire. So yeah. we. It wasn't. Yeah, we got what we needed. Yeah. Batteries. Batteries. Just batteries. <laughs> Nothing they else. They didn't have any food. I always think Girl Scout cookies, but they didn't have any food. No. Thank goodness you tripped over that hedgehog. Yeah. It was actually tasty. It tastes yeah. like chicken. Good. And you could use its spikes to sort of pick up the flesh. But I still smell of boy bands. Yeah, that stuff really. Stays with you. Yeah, it does. Jeez, it's cold as well. This fire's going out. Can you put another, another yeah, put another log on put it. Put another squirrel on it. <laughs> that was a bit of a heavy log. Yeah. Yeah. Very realistic oh, sound effect. Very realistic. You could have added that in later, but you know. I'm, I might still do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, so looking up into the night sky. I haven't seen stars in a long time. No. Oh. What does it make you think of? Well, we haven't seen a film in a long time, and the only thing I can think of is Stars in the Rise. It's back with Harry Hill. Oh, it's dreadful. Oh, have you watched it? Um, I don't know. How anybody can feasibly find Harry Hill funny on any level is beyond me. Now, give him his due, I think his burps were funny. His burps? TV, TV burps of. Well, okay. I don't know. When he's taking the piss out of EastEnders and Coronation Street, he's okay. But when he's actually interacting with everyday people with stupid personality problems about being other people, then it is a bit of a shit show. Yeah, and he had Derek Akara come on. No way. Oh, that was awesome. No way! Yeah. Oh! Oh! oh. That, honestly, Derek could turn up to the opening of a letter. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank you. <laughs> Anyway, stars, 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 stars. Our planet, 
is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Hey, back in October, did you go and see Interstellar? The Palm film. Oh, in, into Stella. Into Stella, yeah. No, 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 no. Was it a porn film? Oh, you mean the the Anne Hathaway porn film? Oh, yes, the Nolan film. The, yes, Christopher Nolan into in, into Stella, not into Stella, but into Stella. Oh, right, yes, I did. We've always defined ourselves by the ability to overcome the impossible. And we count these moments. The first ever to fly faster than the speed of sound. These moments when we dared to aim higher. To break barriers. To reach for the stars. 76, you are go. To make the unknown known. Four, five, please, for me. Well, if um, actually, if in, if Interstellar is correct, yes. we're actually watching the film and doing this podcast at the same time, and doing everything at the same time because everything happens at the same time, and everything that can happen does happen at the same time. Yeah, yeah, which um, which is a bit weird. Yeah, the the concept is a little bit heady. When it, when it comes it to, to non-linear time. Non-linear time is what we're talking about here. Yes, indeed. Yes, the scientific term. Um, which means that every single part of your life is being lived out exactly in the second. Mm. And everything that can ever happen... Is happening. Is happening and does happen. Yes. So Christopher Nolan decided to make Interstellar, okay? Yeah. and um, not the porn film, me. Not the, the porn film. But the porn uh, film, actually... Shorter, about forty-five minutes long. <laughs> Better music, maybe. <laughs> but um, I mean, it's a groundbreaking film uh, from one from a visual perspective. Oh yeah, yeah. It was kind of stunning. like yeah. It's what George Clooney's Solaris, what I wanted Solaris to be like when that first came out. Mm. Um, except um, you know, Interstellar kind of um, was supposed to be more scientifically groundbreaking in terms of the fact that they had this guy who was um, uh, I guess he was an astrophysicist um, um, yeah astrophysicist quantum mechanics that's it yeah oh right okay um, he's a quantum uh, astrophysicist that's it and he basically was the um, the go to guy who helped Christopher Nolan in the development of the story mm. um, which is fine because there's probably a lot of theory involved, even though I think a lot of the theory is not scientifically um, accurate, because I don't think it can be accurate unless we actually do go and visit another planet and do uh, find go another... Go through wormhole. Yeah, wormhole, yeah. which ever since Star Trek, wormholes have always been just this, this portal that takes you from one place to another. Well, funnily enough, um, there is wormholes all around the world. Yeah? Earth, yeah, uh, but they're called Ikea. Yes, you're right. Because the other day um, we went to IKEA and I could have sworn I was in there for about half an hour. And my yeah. dad was waiting in the car when I come out. He'd aged 23 years. Shit. Yeah. It's a furniture store that makes me want to shout. Because once you've entered, you can't find your way out. That's why I fear IKEA. I won't go there again. I don't want a bookcase called Billy or a table called Ben. When did this happen? Saturday. What was this? Well, oh, about two weeks before, about, oh, yeah, two before weeks you Saturday. were kidnapped by the Spice Girls. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> but then as we... <laughs> I fucking 
yeah. I can see. I mean, I mean, this is really happening to us. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, then, Ikea. I, I, as we know, though, I went into Ikea, got abducted by Spice Girls, all at the same time. All at the same time. All at the same time. Hi, I'm Fred. Welcome to Ikea. Today we're going to try something a little bit different. In a time-traveling experiment, we're going to allow our customers to experience our solutions in the future. 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 Yeah, time, of course. Time's time is relative. Time is relative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know you're right. Um, let's talk about what we loved about Interstellar. Okay. Um, again, you mentioned the visuals. The visuals are stunning. Um, the story's okay. Yeah, the story's good. It's touching. Anyone who's a parent will know how difficult it was for him to just leave his kids <laughs> yeah but I mean I, I, I can actually relate to that because I've been writing this story this science fiction story about a character who is leaving their family and, and that I, I couldn't call close encounters of the third kind no it's, not, yeah, it's taking me it's taking me 37 years to write it and I'm only 34 spacey time and space is not relative um, but yeah I, I, I could not find a motivational um, point for him to do it, for, for my character in this story to do it. So then I was fascinated when I watched Matthew McConaughey um, come about the decision so quickly and easily without, you know, really thinking Maybe it through. if um, you had Michael Caine telling you it might be more persuasive for do you it. to leave your kids. But this is, okay, but this is, I mean... I don't want to be a nitpicker of the film straight away, but I think right out the right out the um, the gate, there's an issue with with motivation. There is obviously he's um, he's a farmer. He, he's a farmer, but his motivation is he he's going to be. What happened then? I don't know. It was like a hum that I had no idea. How, it's like the central heating being on. You don't notice it's on until it goes off. And especially when you're in the woods, standing, sitting around a campfire, that's bloody unusual. Yeah, some yeah. electronic interference. Yeah, that's oh. weird. So the, the thing is, my problem with the motivation is, uh, and, it, and it's textbook. This is a textbook Hollywood moment. I do kind of, yeah, it is recording. Um, is he's sitting there on the veranda um, with his father yeah. and saying, and they, and straight away in the film. As John all, Lithgow plays his yeah, father. Yeah, all characters in in films generally just tell you things that as if, as if they've never spoken about it before in their life, right? And he says, "You used to be into all this space stuff, you know, um, and now you're a farmer." You know, they say it pretty much outright, and that's my John Lithgow impression, by the way. It's uncanny. It's, it's fucking great. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so basically, they they sit there and they tell things to the audience because they need to feed the audience. But of course, within the next couple of days, he's discovered that, uh, and, and it's, only, it's only taken him a couple of days because they think there's a ghost in the house, or the daughter thinks there's a ghost in the house, and it's actually something to do with gravity shifting dust and, and books keep falling off the bookcase, which we'll learn why later on. I well, knew it was him. You knew it was him? I did. Yeah? I knew. Straight away from the beginning, when the book started from, they were trying to make a point of the, is it a ghost? Is it like Paul Feige's activities? I was yeah. thinking. Yeah. I know he's going to go through a wormhole and I knew space and time is going to come into it and we all know that time is relative. I thought, he's doing that. He's is doing it? that from another dimension. I didn't let and myself... I was so yeah. vindicated. Well done. I mean, I'm, I'm just... Uh, I'm, I, I kind of get caught up in the details in the moment and I don't kind of think, where is this heading? I literally just thought, okay, he's learning something really quickly here. And of course, then he decides, oh, these are coordinates. There's a code here. I'm sorry, but... How is he able to decipher what type of encryption that code is going to have in order to then go and find out that they are indeed coordinates? And just by coincidence, those coordinates happen to be within about half an hour drive from his house. OK, so then he drives there. Yeah, I think it's more than half an hour, though, because it's like pitch black by the time they get there, isn't okay. it? Right. And she's yeah. asleep. So about six, let's say it's about six hours. Say it's about three weeks. Well, they actually leave the house and arrive there at the yeah. same time. <laughs> I'm going no, to be doing this all no, the way no, through. No, 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 no. So. Let's say, let's say, okay, I'm going to say in, in, in Earth terms, six hours. Okay. okay. Let's say, right, okay. I'm telling you off now. Sorry. Okay, you've got to stop. But our audience members will be thinking that and knowing it. My mother at the same time. will not be telling you to think. All right, all right. She's, all, she, she's just thought it 
a second ago. So it's too late. Yeah. Um, this mother isn't like a psycho thing, is it? Where she's actually upstairs <laughs> on the <her> chair. <laughs> it's me. Yeah, your mother. What's theirs? We're outside and it's cold. On top of that tree. <laughs> <laughs> Keep all this in because it really just adds to the conceit. Yeah, uh, but but yeah, so it, it basically, so it goes inside and all of a sudden it's like, uh, it's like I used to, I used to be a pilot. I used to fly for NASA and and there's this thing in school where children are being told that Apollo didn't exist. So the, all the coincidences kind of just mesh in, and then all of a sudden he's in there. Yeah, and Michael Caine told. used to be his professor. Yeah, and it's like, oh, that's, that's just a lucky, isn't it? Look, it's a, so he, he, obviously he just he deciphered the code, and he, you know, because he is skilled in that area, <laughs> being, yeah. no, it, he's not skilled in that he's area just at all. a really clever guy, though. But, it, it, but it took them, how many was it, it's, I think he says 37 years to, to decipher that code themselves. Yeah. So, and in, in, in within a couple of days, he's done that and gotten to where they, he needs to be. So he said. Makes you think that if NASA yeah. being in this now clandestine yeah. uh, group of people would possibly want to, to have Matthew McConaughey on board with him while they were doing this, would that have made more sense? Yeah. Instead of letting him farm. Yeah, let him farm. Um, but obviously they'd realised that, oh, God, we've made a big mistake here. We should have actually had him involved all along. But as soon as you've actually accidentally fallen into our um, you know forbidden hidden layer of, of NASA workings and and they business. never really go into how how the hell did you find us you know he goes oh well some dust, dust fell on the floor, on the floor. and <laughs> yeah, there's a code in it and I, I just I just found, yeah, I just naturally. found it because of that. And you go, oh, let's, let's let's look into that a little bit more, please. Yeah. Well, the other thing. Think, All right, right, fine. Okay. You see dust in your house. How many times have you looked at dust and thought, "Well, this is strange." There's a, there's something in the dust that I can actually decipher here. I mean, how do you decipher dust through vibrations? I mean, I, 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 I it's just I mean, he apparently he uses his watch to kind of tap out the code and yeah yeah but how does that work i mean how, how come a naturally occurring gravitational shift actually give you the code that you need to understand that gives you coordinates to a place that you know it's not as if they were telling him where the base was they're simply just saying that this is where the core of all this gravitational stuff is happening so the science is a little bit screwy here because they needed to find a way of getting Matthew McConaughey there. Yeah, it reeks a little bit of lazy writing, a little bit. Very, and I, I kind of felt that in that moment. And then, of course, when they say, well, I guess you can come along. It, it made me think, no, this is kind of like the Prometheus. Let's gather all these grunts on, on a trillion dollar mission. That is the last thing that's going to, it's the only chance for mankind. But we'll just bring Tom the welder and Bob the farmer. And, you know, it's just like, really, really find yeah. the best of the best. Is Matthew McConaughey the best person on, for this mission? No, it's Dave Bowman from 2001 and everybody knows it. It is. Damn straight. Open the pod bay doors, please, Hal. Do you read me, Hal? Affirmative, Dave. I read you. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. It's a, it's a father-daughter relationship. It's a parent-child yeah. relationship. And, and, and how do you say goodbye? Um, without a guaranteed return ticket. Where where you're where you're going, which yeah. is what happens to my man Cooper, um, and that part everybody will understand. If you're a parent, or we've all been children before, we've all had those goodbyes, and this is to the extreme. So anyway, so they he goes off into space. Yeah, he leaves his daughter. His daughter. Um, very uh, quick decision. Very quick decision. So uh, well, he's abandoned his entire family. He's got a son as well, but his son seems okay with it. He can just farm, but his daughter's very upset, and basically holds a grudge for the next. 30, 40 years. Until he, she is the age that he was when he left. Yeah. Um, and she leaves him that video message. Yeah. Obviously. But a lot happens uh, along the journey. Um, a, few, a few interesting little little uh, nitpicks. The first thing is, is that when they actually do launch from Earth, yeah, they launch using the typical rockets that launch spaceship into space. Mm. Right? Okay. So when they get to the first planet, 
Well, they have to the dock in that space station, don't they? That yes, they dock in the space station. The twirly whirly <laughs> thing. That twirly whirls. The twirly space. whirly whirly. Yeah, yeah. And it takes how many years? Is about three, four years to get to Jupiter. Yes. Or is yeah. it Saturn? Saturn. Saturn. Where the wormhole is. Yeah, because Jupiter would be. It's been overused, but uh, it, it, it's a bizarre thing because you know they. They do that. And uh, they find the wormhole, they go through the wormhole. Was there a little part of you, when they go through that wormhole, was hoping to just see, like, a baby? <laughs> like, in 2001. Because <laughs> this film is essentially 2001, it's no, not quite as good. It's tri- Yeah, it, the film, I mean, it's a beautiful... I mean, I, when I first watched it the first time... Time, 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 time. It sounds just like Koyanis Katsi. Yeah, and when when Hans Zimmer and Christopher Nolan talk to each other about what the soundtrack should be, it should it should be like something we've never heard before. Um, but no, no, no. I think they were just sitting there watching Koyanis Katsi and they thought, let's do this. They should have got the Spice Girls to um, done the music for it. Um, when they go, when they're going through the wormhole, when to become one. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. I was actually trying to make it sound good. What's that thing called when you fall in love with you? The person who's kidnapped you? <laughs> it's, um, Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm. You're getting yeah. Stockholm Syndrome. You sound to fall for our captors. Oh, gosh. <laughs> gosh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not only falling for our captors, I'm actually starting to sound like Hugh Grant. <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Bloody hell. Fuck. Um, hire a prostitute and get a blowjob now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so divine. <laughs> so yeah, so they get through the um the wormhole. They go to the first planet. Yeah, well they have to decide oh, no. yeah. what planet they should go to first. Don't but judging the sort of that the idea that um the astronauts are actually able to look at a planet and decipher now from a great distance mm. what is likely to be on that planet, or how much, you know, land mass is to water or if there's any chance of, you know, life. Um, they do not realise that the first planet is full of water until they're actually hitting the water. That's, no. What's wrong with that? They, they need to get a, a warranty check on their sensors because that, that doesn't yeah, make sense. Yeah, clearly, yeah, clearly. And it's such a bizarre planet because it's not very deep, the water, is it? They can walk on it, but they can get big rock off waves coming at you. Like, are we saying that this, this, this world obeys its own laws of physics hmm. or are we saying that the laws of physics that we sort of agreed on here should apply there shouldn't it this is why i don't understand why the uh, the, the the mind behind the uh, science decided to do to to uh, allow for such i mean yeah science fiction has to be fiction as well i get that but did he not have a say as to say, well, I don't think this is possible? Yeah, I mean... Or maybe we're yeah, shallow to something. I don't know. Perhaps can shallow... Like, the water was about, what would you say, a foot deep? Yeah. Can that but create then, a wave that's like... Hang on, don't waves crash only when they're actually hitting uh, land? And if there is water, enough water... If there is so much water, it is there a possibility that there is enough land that that could... Maybe that is just the amount of land that is exposed is just not exposed at all. Or maybe the fact that, yeah, these huge colossal waves yeah. are going around the planet constantly because they can't ever stop. Yeah. It's, they're just increasing the size. But what and gets, that's why the water's yeah. gone down and there's just stuff on the But what bottom. gets me is that they're able to instantly know that it's not deep by just jumping out and yet they didn't realise there was water on that planet to begin with. That, 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 in, in that consistency. Yeah. That kind of... A bit that, odd. Yeah, a bit odd. And luckily, the, um, the the robots that were based on the Tetris game <laughs> were um, able there to save them. Oh, but of course, that that um, robot in his natural state is a monolith. Whenever you see robots in science fiction, they're either going to be "Hello, I am a robot," or they're a little floaty thing, or they're just this mechanical thing on wheels, like in Moon, yeah. with a big smiley face, which I think is probably the most original uh, way of, of portraying Kevin Spacey in a film yeah. ever. And that film um, is fantastic. Love that film, and we'll talk about that as well. Yeah. But it, it, it's bizarre that um, that the hidden me- mechanics of this device, not only is he uh, an interrogation um, robot, he has all these different algorithms about honesty and and you know all these different things, but yet he can 
fucking get across water really fast and, and turn himself into whatever shape he ne- is necessary. But yeah, he's still a big oblong block. Yeah. And, and it's, it, I find it odd that that is how that that is the idea behind that. Technology. Well, I think out of all a bit of a convenience. Yeah, out of all the designs they could have come up with, I, it's probably the most clunky and, yeah, and, and it's unnecessary. Bit, it's not very futuristic, I guess. Well, but not very practical. No. Um, you know, the most practical shape in in the universe is a sphere, mm. as far as I'm concerned. And, and I thought we were beyond um, coffin sized rectangles. But, uh, you know, but do you think he's done it purposely just to, just to do the monolith. the monolith thing? Yeah. So, so as he basically said, I really like 2001. I just kind of want to make it again, but I don't. Longer. But I don't. <laughs> and yeah, otherwise, why why have a robot in there at all? What's the point? Mm. Um, so yeah, uh, and then they obviously need to get this sensor thing, and they get it back to the ship, but. Um, it all smashed up, hasn't it? The yeah, it's smashed up by the waves, obviously, yeah. and there's waves coming towards them. The beardy guy, the bearded scientist, who is obviously quite an intelligent man because he's on this mission, mm. standing right next to the sh- uh, to the spaceship, waiting for Anne Hathaway to run all the way here, doesn't budge. Yeah, no, the robot that. goes, picks her up, and takes <laughs> her back into the shuttle, and just stares at them while the wave gets closer, instead of actually being on the edge of the ship waiting for her to get in and then quickly getting yeah, in after maybe, her. Um, Within seconds. Or he maybe even turning the ship on. Having yeah. Having it ready to go. Having it ready. Or doing something in order to aid. He just stands there. And then he gets swept away in the wave and dies. And it's like, I know they were trying to make a point they needed to lose somebody, but what is the point in having intelligent life forms such as humans on this mission if they're just going to allow themselves to, well, to be honest, just look in the face of death and go, oh, fuck it. <laughs> I've come all this way. I've hey. come all this way. Um, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm in shock, obviously, because this is the biggest wave I've ever seen. Um, oh, uh, no. Uh, I better, better switch the ship on. No, really. nothing. And he just... <laughs> He just dies needlessly, pointlessly. Um, yeah, that, that that bothered me. Right, okay. But the next point that bothered me, before I actually start going on to the things that I really enjoyed about the film, is that they then took off from the, from the planet. Yeah. Bear in mind that this planet has a similar gravity to Earth. What did I explain about their leaving Earth? Yeah, that they, was different they, to... Yeah, leaving... well, they obviously needed a huge rocket propulsion to get out of Earth's atmosphere. No. But not with this... No, they've got a Type 3 shuttlecraft from Star Trek Next Generation. It that literally w- just flies off, you know. So they could have just flown off yeah. planet Earth, refuelled and then carried on. Clunky, clunky, clunky. So why... And then they get to the yeah. s- spinny spaceship. And they, yeah, you know, yeah, when they off. take off. So they've been away a few hours. But yeah. for this poor guy on the space, years, it's 23 it? years. Is but, and, and that's the amusing thing, because when they actually are on the water, don't they have like a big long conversation? Well, after the guy dies in the water, they're still in the shuttle and they're, they're talking about destiny and life. And um, They waste a lot of time, considering they, they were supposed to be really, really quick. Yeah. Yeah, they do, yeah. Poor, um, poor guy. They didn't care about him. But he said he did have a nap for a little bit. <laughs> but he was waiting for him to come back and then thought they're, they're never going to come back. I yeah. would have thought that. The moment they left, I'd have been right. I'm going to sleep. Yeah. You wake me up when you get back, please. Oh, 23 years. 23 years is a long time. And I think that the, the um, psychiatrist would certainly have a problem with the fact that he was actually pretty well made, you know, for uh, for some... I mean, if you looked at Moon, is it Moon? Yeah. Where he goes insane? Yeah, yeah. And he, has, he makes, like, different versions of himself, doesn't he? Yeah, that, that, that was something else that I saw. Um, There's another film. There is another film. Love. The film Love. Oh, it's, right, a 2000, it's, a, it's a 2011 film directed by William Eubank. And it's about a guy who um, loses his mind uh, on, a, on, a, on a, a space station as uh, life support dwindles. He's trying to stay alive and then he, he, he goes through claustrophobia. All these different weird things go on and, and, and he actually makes some discoveries. And it's a very good film. It's kind of like Moon, but it just takes it to that Charles Manson kind of madness. Right. Uh, you know, w- but without without the killing spree you know he's on his own so he literally would just be crazy wow. and I find it I find that was quite accurate in the way that I would probably be 
if I was actually there. I mean, so when this guy, when they come back and they find this guy who just slightly has a bit of a beard, yeah, could have shaved a couple of days before, couldn't he? Really? Think, yeah, yeah, considering he's, he's aged twenty three years, he looks remarkably well. Yeah, considering it doesn't like he's changed that much. Just he's gone a bit grey. No, no, no self harming. No, no uh, defecating on the walls. I would have expected. I mean, if, I don't know if you've ever seen Mission to Mars. Was it Mission to yeah, Mars yeah, or was it? Mars, yeah. yeah, I think that they had a similar character. I think it was Don Cheadle. But, um, but yeah, Don Cheadle. But he's literally in a in a kind of a, 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 a not abattoir. He's in an arboretum full of plants, and he's literally just lost it. And he's only been there for about a decade or so. Um, I could spend about two hours in my own head, and then I lose it. So you know what I mean. Twenty three yeah. years of pushing it a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm okay. I'm, I'm quite self sufficient. I could spend the whole week in this house and not leave it, and be totally amused and happy. And, you know, I'd still be cleaning, I'd still be doing podcasts, I'd still be feeding the cats. You know. That's about saying if we ever find our way back home. That is, if, that's yeah. That, you know, hopefully tomorrow morning when we, when it's light, we'll be able to find out where we are and make it home. But yeah, anyway, that being know. said, you know. I know, but we'll, we'll be fine, you know. I think The what, fire's warm, you know, we'll yeah. be okay. The, yeah. the, the, we've got a few more dead hedgehogs here if we get hungry later on. So, uh, yeah, so Love is a, is a kind of a film that explores that psychological uh, lack of uh, of trying to be, uh, actually surviving on your own for 23 mm. years. So, so, obviously, yes, yeah, so they've got 23 years of this guy. He seems okay about it. Fine. We need to get to So we have to decide what planet to go to. Yeah. And they go... A, she wants to go to one planet, doesn't she? Yeah. Because a fellow okay, that she's in love with mm. was there. Oh dear. But he decides to go, not to go to that one, to go to the other planet. Yeah. Because of strategic farming capabilities <laughs> on that planet. I don't know. It makes a great choice because it's nothing but freaking ice. Yeah, because they, they obviously really know what they're doing. And I think this, this whole mission, just like Prometheus, in a way... Um, it's so blinded and just with money just thrown at it <laughs> but we're going to do it anyway and yes we'll say it the f- revive the man who, who cries who cries who's a fantastic actor and I like him but yeah. I did go oh it's Matt Damon, Damon. <laughs> yeah and it's do you it, know what I had I had the song in my head from Silver Sarah Silverman oh, the Jimmy yeah. Kimmel special and, and as soon as I saw him I go I, I had this I went I'm fucking Matt Damon. She's fucking Matt Damon. <laughs> Who's fucking Matt Damon? And he, then he starts crying, and I thought, oh dear, I upset him. Let's carry on with the film. <laughs> um, so well, yeah, it's it's weird. Yes, because it's Matt Damon. I don't know why. I like Matt Damon. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's because he's such a huge star, and then he's just, yeah. he's just there, and it. it, it it's kind of like, oh, it's the, they're playing the Matt Damon card. It's like they're playing the, uh, if we've lost you now, don't worry, because we've got Matt Damon ready for you, just in case you were you were about to leave yeah. the theatre. Yeah. Because it, it's, it's, it's been two hours already, like we talked so about now. last week, yeah. with, obviously, uh, Kevin Spacey coming in to seven, yes. halfway through. Perfect. I mean, you, it's not awkward, it's not weird, and you can, yeah, great. But with this, I don't know why. I don't know why, because I love Matt Damon. They, they needed a, like a... Uh, Giovanni Lubinsky or uh, um, somebody who is a little he bit he would have been poor, perfect yeah. for that yeah or even Wacken Phoenix something like that Wacky, yeah somebody Wacky. somebody who you kind of go and think yes this is going to be interesting but when it's Matt Damon I didn't he didn't kind of think oh this is this could be interesting because Matt Damon you trust him too much what, what, Wacken Phoenix has got that unstable quality yeah. or that could makes used... you think fuck he's going to he's going to screw them over they could have used Sheila at both Shia LaBeouf and then just the part where he's about to go crazy he just puts the bag over his head <laughs> <laughs> you are a genius then you're not 0.5% which sometimes, sometimes it's not 0.5% sometimes it's 5% but then isn't measurement also relative to time and space so it doesn't really matter exactly yeah. so, but it's Matt Damon and I don't feel threatened by him yet I don't feel comforted by him being in the film as well it's just like he's there yeah. Uh, oops, I woke up and I'm in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah. The the scenes, the scene where Matthew McConaughey finally sees his daughter, who's now his age, yes. and she's saying to him, like, look, I'm the age you are, you were when you you're left, not back and yet. you're not back, and she's angry. Yeah. He's brilliant in that. He's 
sob he, in. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's brilliant. He's I like. Really, do you know, I do like Matthew McConaughey in this film. So, yeah. And I think that he was right for the film. He did contact, remember, with Jodie Foster, which kind of explored the idea of space exploration and going on better. Because um, a lot yeah. of the themes in Interstellar yes. were already in. But that's because Contact. the guy, yeah, because the guy who um, now let me get this right. Um, it's the same physicist. It's who, the, the physicist yeah. actually dated, uh, or no, he got um, Carl Sagan together with his wife, and I think I ought to get the name of the, uh, the the scientist who actually worked on this film because it's very very useful. So what Carl gonna, Sagan's a hero of mine. It is amazing. I mean, I love yeah. that sh- the, the series that he did. I mean, the the, the book Contact is, is a phenomenal book to to read. Anyway, mm-hmm. I absolutely space to me is is the place where I love to be. It's my comfort zone. Kip Thorne, yes, right. So Kip Thorne actually was responsible for getting uh, uh, Carl Sagan and his wife together, and he basically worked yeah, uh, he through worked. equations, scientific papers, and uh, yeah, the the. Supermassive rotation black holes. He was, it, that's kind of his expertise. So I was wondering with physicists like that, is their life actually like the Big Bang Theory? Yeah. Where all they have to say, they'll just say something like, you know, someone go, hey, you know, can you pass me that tin opener? And then they'll go, yeah, sure. And then there's a big kind of laughter for no apparent reason. It just follows him around wherever he goes. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're you know, right. it's just sort of every like <laughs> physicist out there who's got that. Yeah. He was hachoo! Ha 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 ha! Cam laughter, I'm gonna put some cam laughter Oh, cam laughter, really? Yeah. After what we've been through? I mean, yeah! <laughs> Let's just pretend that if that was an episode of the Big Bang Theory, it'd be like, what? With what we've just been through? What we've been through? So yeah, we've been through this ordeal, and I'm really glad that we're out in, in the open space. What? You're glad we're out in the open space? Space. It's all relative. <laughs> relative, yes. Ah, like science says. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? This is, we can't even not be funny. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> Look, yeah, so, okay, and, yeah. anyway, so he was a physicist who worked on contact and in Great. It's all good, yes. He's clever. He's clever. He's clever. Well, it's got to be said, Christopher Nolan's a clever guy. He is clever. He's a clever filmmaker. Yes. So, you know, and, and he's, can't take and that he away has, from... But no, no, no. Not, you know, and he edits his own films, doesn't he? Or he'll work with the editors while they're editing And he films. still... Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. And, and, and while we're actually praising Christopher Nolan, he still works with film. Yeah, 33 mil. And he has the fear... Mm. Ah, let me tell you about the fear because the fear is Stephen uh, tell me about the fear please well the fear is basically as we've always said that if uh, if somebody's working with fear they are putting all they they can into the job because they realise that if they don't it's it's all over and I think that the digital f- form of filmmaking um, takes away that fear to a certain extent because mm. he didn't know exactly how the film was going to look until it was actually all through the negatives uh, back in the house, ready to be edited, ready to be recomposited, special effects to be placed on. He's done it the old-fashioned way. Yeah. He does not use digital um, ta- uh, film. No, no, the digital recording. Yeah, yeah. In, in, uh, in, like everybody else does. So um, he li- he likes the look of it, he likes the size of it, the depth of it, and, and, and you know, he, he he's a true uh, connoisseur of the film medium. And he's probably one of the last ones out there who does that. So, you know, kudos to him. Mm. But, um, and I think we ought to give it maybe back off a little bit and kind of realise this is still science fiction. That the devices that they use, if you don't actually give any thought, like I did the first time I watched it, I didn't give it any thought, were okay. You let them go because you're following the story. You're so enveloped within the characters motivations their thoughts and their feelings and what they're seeing what they're experiencing that you don't care so much about the scientific inconsistencies that we brought up mm-hmm. however it, it it bothers me when they're so blatant and, and, and inconsi- it, it's inconsistency that bothers me in films yeah so and it's not only that the the in all the press junkets for this film they're trying to say that they really looked into the science exactly so they put and then for it to not 
be quite work. Yeah, and, and that's exactly it because they, they pushed it in the documentary, the making of the film. They even made a Discovery Channel uh, film about the science of Interstellar with Matthew McConaughey doing the voiceover for that as well, the mm. Discovery Channel. So they pushing, they're, they've been pushing it out. And kudos to them because they were kind of bringing in the elements, but they didn't really explain anything that actually happened within the film. They they kind of gave you the um, um, the, the basic 101, like uh, if you get an orange and an apple and you smash them together, you know, that kind of explanations, which yeah. make, uh, dumb down for an audience that uh, it, it enables them to kind of say, I like science. Uh, science is great. Right. So, uh, you know, or I fucking love science is that Facebook page comes up with every, every time with those amusing little things that really aren't that scientific anymore. Yeah. But, but the, the people have lost their idea of what science is. I mean, look at Star Trek now. Star Trek used to inspire people to become astrophysicists, scientists, engineers, doctors, and now it just inspires them to be sniper rifles um, and uh, run. assailants and, and to be able to run. Yeah, it's good for the, the marathon industry. Marathon industry runners. I mean, I, I actually, you're you're right because I have never seen uh, in, in my life. I've never known so many people to actually be into running. Yeah. And it's a direct result of the reason Star Trek, the Star Trek being Star Trek. remade. <laughs> because they're so invested. But no, I mean, what, but my point is, is that that people won't look at Interstellar and think, "Wow, I fuck." I, I, I go I, for I, a run. <laughs> I want to go for a run. They, they, but they won't necessarily go. Um, I want to learn everything there is about quantum mechanics, science, string theory. It doesn't um, inspire that, does it? No, it doesn't. Not not to the to the capabilities that we're actually needing science to become. Mm. They will still go in with it with that kind of like a glamorized idealism, um, which which films generally just gush out at you. But saying that, it's a, it's a film. science fiction film. It's yeah. a film, and as a film, it's it's good. It is great. It's yeah. a beautiful film. It's it's beautifully delivered when it when the um the spinny spaceship spinny spaceship is going past saturn yes it took my breath away yeah it looks Gorgeous. incredible i know a friend of mine were watching it imax style with his girlfriend yeah and that scene his girlfriend nearly had to walk out it just sort of over overwhelmed overwhelmed it, yeah. it. which is exactly how 2001 affected people when they first watched that on the big screen i mean that was that was the same thing oh absolutely and i think that film still does that and it does, yeah. It just shows how great Kubrick was, <laughs> and it's how many years old. Now, and if you, you think know. about the the kind of science fiction films that were being made around about that time, it was all about the taking the submarines up into space and having the bloop 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 yeah. bloop bloop bloop, and uh, you know yeah. looking through little steph stethoscopes, yeah, stethoscopes. Yeah. stethoscopes. <laughs> how fucking crazy is that? Yeah. Um, looking through um, scopes. Yeah, and all the robots, like the boogie, boogie, boogie guy, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yes. And, yeah, um, the little Robbie the Robot kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, he just looked at all that and thought, no, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Uh, yeah, Kubrick. Now, that's a man who had a big brain. Now, my God, As, yeah. as many historians, historians have said. But, but that's the thing, he, he took the time to make his film. His films took years to develop and to, mm. and to create. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure this film also had a lot of mileage before I mean in its original concept yeah um, I don't think it I don't know if it says here when the idea was the production um, let's have a quick 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 look development 1997 so that you're looking you know oh that's the yeah 2006 it started um, so that's quite a long time yeah you know he's made a few films to kind of get the financing up and obviously well, best part of a decade best part of it yeah exactly and I think Kubrick would just not make it but Kubrick would not make anything in that time you'd literally people would think that he died or something and mm. until it, and then he made another film and they'd be like oh Kubrick film oh my god is he still alive so it's that kind of a thing and you you know that you really um, you, you know you, you, you know that you had something special with yeah him. yeah so going back to Winter Selwyn what do you think obviously yeah Matt Damon messes it up for everybody and causes all kinds of Problems. Yeah, he, yeah. St he steals the ship, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, which is kind of amusing. What a, yeah, he steals the ship. They needed a bit of like, action 
in yeah, this film. Yeah, I think that might like, be what it is. Yeah. Sort of, Act three was a little bit bland. It was lo- maybe a little bit too like two thousand and one, where things go a little bit uh, quantum time space weird kind of reality. Yeah. So they needed to kind of pivot that uh, uh, off. You know something that was full of action. Yeah. So, but yeah, I was okay. It, didn't it was all right. I, I like because obviously exciting. He, yeah, he, he has to try and duck. And yes. They've disabled the thing that helps him duck. She so has to just try and do it. <laughs> He's smashing it into the thing, doesn't he? Yeah. But they manually spin at the right speed, and then that's it. They hook up, which I never doubted they weren't going to do it. Oh no, no, because McConaughey was in control. I think, and, he's a, and you're, he's I, I didn't. He was. To- did you notice he was totally unrecognizable in this role? Mm. He had clothes on. Yeah, yeah, he the whole time. He did not get his shirt off once. No, amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah, what a chameleon. What a guy. What a guy. Reconnaissance. McCon- yeah, yeah, reconnaissance. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, um, so. But then, obviously, Matt Damon. Matt Damon gets blown out, doesn't he? The, yeah. Yeah, a lot kind of thing. Yeah, and, and then reconnaissance has to. Uh, they fucked up Matt Damon. They fucked up Matt Damon. They fucked up Matt Damon. <laughs> Thank you. So then, basically, McConaughey like sacrifices, him. sacrifices himself, doesn't he? Yes. To yes. save Anne Hathaway because she's annoying. But he drifts off in the same way that George Clooney does in Solaris. Gravity. Oh, Gravity. Gravity. Solaris, I don't think there was any action scenes at all. No, no. That was a psychological but, uh, but then, love story. What happens then? Does he... Because he sort of goes through the wormhole himself, doesn't he? Yeah, I think it's the black in... hole. Oh, no, he goes into the black hole, that's right. The black hole, because that... And then, is it the aliens, this intelligence... So it was never... Intelligence it... that... It's never explained what happens now. I don't think it ever was a black hole. I think the whole... Th- uh, you know, it was an artificial structure of some kind that was assumed well, to be a Well, this is hole. a fifth... Dim- he goes into a fifth dimension, doesn't he? Hmm. Where he sees everything playing out all at the same time this is when Kip Thorne left left the production I think and, just and went who off. knew <laughs> if you ever need to find the fifth dimension look behind your bookcase hmm. I know we've got a bookcase over there and I don't, like, I've got nothing but Ikea well we would do if we weren't in a forest but <laughs> <laughs> I forgot yep. and that's why all the way through the film because I knew because I, I knew this film was messed from space and time I knew oh. that it was him who was doing the thing with the books. Yes, and I, yes. So throughout the whole film, I'm waiting for that part to happen. Right. And when it happened, I was like, oh, we go, there he is, behind the bookcase. There's a bit of a parallel, though, to our situation now. now. Um, how do we know that we're not behind the bookcase right now, as we're sitting in front of this campfire? If, well, if Matthew we McConaughey can are... be in the fifth dimension and behind the bookcase at the same time, can't we? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, why not? Why not? Because they've proven that the atom can be in two places at the same time, in two different states. Right, okay, yes. Which proves Einstein's theory of quantum mechanics. Yes, it does. And relativity. So if an atom, and we're made up of atoms... Yes. Incidentally, every atom of your body recycles itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the person you are now is literally will not be the person you are in ten years from now. You have a complete different... I'm, atomic I'm, makeup I'm aware that look like you yeah I mean age is, is so relative to how old your your skin is I mean it could be you, everybody's like 10 years old because they flake off every every so often and, yeah you know, isn't that and great every, to think of yeah, well you know and, and every atom of your body was forged out in the universe from a star from a star and <sighs> I feel so much better about my situation now. Yeah, but every atom of you is forged from a star, and yeah. every atom of everything, which means that we all are connected in some way. Exactly. We're all connected, yeah. the interconnectedness of all things. This is the essence of quantum mechanics. What? But then why but, do I have problems drinking from other people's flasks? <laughs> <laughs> Should I get over myself and realise it's actually my flask and that's my that, that's my mouth yeah, as bit, well? Yeah, and half the dust you're breathing in is dead skin anyway. Exactly, and I don't seem to be concerned about that. Dust. 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 Okay, so where are we? You, you, your brain just exploded with this amazing two two places in one. Well, yeah, I just remember me think I remember reading a science yeah. journal that you know that Einstein <laughs> was proven right, and then after, they have proven that an atom can be in two places yeah, at the same yeah. time, which is kind of which like, is 
projection in a way. It's it's projecting two things into yeah. one place, and it's uh, out of body experiences. All these kind of things must all begin to connect it in mm. some way. That's what I mean. I love the idea of we are all connected. Mm. Yeah, I have this theory with um, religions. Yes, where um, the basic dogma, dogma of every religion is the same. Yes, of the, the Christ figure. Uh, and then the God figure, you know, you know yeah. or in whatever Islam, Judaism, it's or, or a tribe lost tribe, or a tribe lost. The, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the same, and yes. but they always have that same sort of story, that same sort of idea. Could it be that we are all connected yes. on an unconscious level, and why these stories, Jesus, why all these stories parallel each other so yes. well? Is because we're experienced this uh, this. We're and experiencing relativity at the same time uh, with each other without realising yeah, 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 it on exactly. a subconscious level. What I would have liked them to have done with Interstellar is to explore the, the interconnectivity of all things. The idea of we're all experiencing consciousness at the same time is a beautiful idea and something yes. would yeah. have been nice for them to explore. Yeah, exactly. But do you know what? They There was one film that actually did explore this and it was the worst film that could possibly be used for this uh, experience. Spice it? World the movie. No. Sadly no, but the interesting reference. And it wasn't Guardians of the Galaxy either. Oh. Um Lucy tried. Ooh. Lucy tried to kind of uh, they touched upon it um I, I think almost accidentally because I don't think they really knew what they were doing. Yeah. But they touched upon it but they never did anything, you know, nobody actually said well that was actually quite an interesting thing but because you actually filled the rest of the film with such sort of shite and bollocks we're going to ignore it because it doesn't make any sense in the context of the film yeah. but yeah the the idea that that you can look in the eye of another of another creature and it knows exactly what you've been through and what you're thinking and what you've become and what you're going to be would be mm. an amazing but to have that idea put out there that might get into people's heads that we are all connected yes we are all the, we're all one we were literally born we were literally made out of the same thing that blew out of a star billions of years that, ago that makes war totally irrelevant yeah exactly yeah what makes, a message to put out there it would be yes and it's but it's not put out there enough i think people have said it before moby sung about it yeah, yeah. moby yeah. literally has sung about it but people don't get it because you know, because we're still all look different. Everybody still needs to... The thing is, humanity is defined by its differences. It's defined by their enemies because the only way that you can feel good about yourself is if you have somebody who's below you to look down on. That is the way humanity thinks because if it, if That's it believes... we've been indoctrinated into that sort exactly, of way of thinking. But if we all believe that we're all the same, that we're all capable of the same thing, that we're all amazing creatures, that we're all actually... That, that I'm no different from a paedophile or a, or a killer or a, or a brain surgeon, then people can't handle that. People can't handle that association. Mm. They cannot allow themselves to have that association. I remember we must have enemies to define ourselves. I remember one there was a shooting in somewhere in America. Yes, and um, it was a horrible thing. And they were trying to blame it on this gang, and it turned out to just be this white guy from around the corner. Yeah. They live in the house and they just couldn't get their heads around it. No. He's one of us. Well, How do you do? He's one of you, he looks just like me. Yeah. And yeah. that yeah. says so much of humanity as a culture. Well, that we're so that lost culture. we're so lost in, in in our imagining everything to be uh everybody to be unique and individual that we mm. don't we don't realise that we're actually all the same. Well, be, because, you know, yeah, and you know, the god is now the the latest iPad to own her. Yes. But you need that, you need this. Things. Things. Things are we're not um we're um we're, we're consumers now. We're Borders. not we're not like a society of people, we're a society of consumers. Yes. Yeah. You know. Hoarders. Yeah. So maybe big dust cloud wiping us all out might be a good thing. And the thing is we you know, we're using all the resources. Yeah. But we know there are ways to stop doing that but, but we, we don't, don't do, do it, it. No. because because people are making so much money out of yeah killing the planet in the and way selling the message it. of of the things that we we need are the, are the same things as the things that we want mm. there's big difference the things that we want and the things that we need are two different things but they have to try and sell it as the same thing yeah no we must drink coca-cola we must Michael Bay, it's his fault. Let's just blame Michael Bay. Yeah. What would happen if Interstellar was made by Michael Bay instead, incidentally? Right. Well, okay. it would it would be into Stella. <laughs>
<laughs> what a pause. Yeah, it'd be. Would uh, he actually go into that genre? He's got to, hasn't he, at some point. Yeah, but he's going to make it action. 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 The first action porn ever. Yeah. <laughs> High concept action porn. Yeah, with big robots fucking burly aged appropriate women. <laughs> and they won't be phallic shaped, they will all be monolith dildos as well. Really pointy. Yeah, that, that robot would look to just be like a dildo machine. <laughs> Orgasm's the universal constant. <laughs> Orgasm, yes. Okay, but well, I think we kind of lost how Michael Bay actually really does see film. <laughs> this is more like um, this is more like yeah. that guy who made Pink Flamingos, I think. Uh, but yeah, but yeah. No, no, come on, Michael Bay's idea of Interstellar would be they they wouldn't there's be been, right. There's been a robot come apocalypse. On. Robot right? The dust yeah. is not dust like we think it. They're all like nano nano machines. Yes. Okay. And um, this sounds they, better. Yeah, and they're sort of destroying everything. So Will Smith and Mark Wahlberg have to. <laughs> uh, yeah, Will Smith and Mark Wahlberg, um, are nuclear physicists, <laughs> as unlikely as that sounds, who realise that this dust is these nano insects. So they have to go. Through this wormhole. And rescue Mila Kunis. The, yeah, yeah, Mila Kunis is through this wormhole, who's... Um, Slow motion booty call. No, she's a uh, direct blood... Rel- um, she, a, a bloodline goes back to ancient times when okay. they knew about these nano machines, and that's what the hieroglyphs were all about. So they have to... But, she, but, but like <laughs> yeah, the hieroglyphs in Egypt yeah, yeah, uh, are all about telling yeah. us that the sand is not sand, it's nanobots that are going to destroy Got the you. planet and right. they feed off humans... They, they go all over your human skin and just eat you and devour eat, you. No, and that's... Eat, no, but they they eat a man, but they take the clothes off a woman. <laughs> they, they, yes, they, yes, yeah, yes. Because they they take their time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to. Get, anyway, but it's in the slow motion, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> they take their yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. got you. And so, what's the black hole? Uh, the black hole is a huge vagina out in space. That's a, right. That's Michael that's Bay's a, you, version of the Big Bang. The, there was like a black hole, which is actually a huge vagina, be, belong is, to this, uh, this. This is how we saw two thousand and one when we saw the baby. They go into the vagina, thus impregnating this huge cosmic woman, and she gives birth to the universe. Right, sexually. Yes, <laughs> in the orgasm, which is the universal constant. In my <laughs> I love this movie now. All of a sudden, it, it, it's relevant. It's, it's timely. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and I think Mila Kunis is available. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's do this. Let's get this done. <laughs> I'm going to start writing this. No, I'm not actually. We've, we've got to. We've got to move on now. So anyway, yeah. Let's Interstellar wrap up time. Wrap up. Right. So I'm happy with the film. It looks gorgeous. I'm st- I'm gonna definitely have the DVD, definitely. Yeah, I'll have the Blu-ray because I'm better. Yeah, me. yeah, you are. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I'm just technologically behind on everything. Sorry. I want to just end on a quote. Okay. By Bill Hicks. Okay. Okay. It's quite poignant. Today, a young man on acid realised that all matter is merely energy condensed to a slow v- vibration. That we all one consciousness experiencing, experiencing itself subjectively. There is no such thing as death. Life is only a dream and we are the imagination of ourselves. Here's Tom with the weather. Is that a good way to end it? I don't know. Is it a good way to end it? I think so because that's basically what we were just talking about. Yeah, you're right, you're right. This is this is the ending right now. We're recording it. Yeah. We're doing all right. Yeah. Do you want another? Should I chuck another hedgehog on the fire? No. I, I, like I say, I think we should we should go and find some food. Okay. There's a light over there. Oh yeah. Do you know what it is? What? Can you hear that that swinging um, gate in the background? Yeah. Well, it's been there all night, but you know, just we're just hearing it now. Oh, it's a, it's a pub sign, swaying in the breeze. Yes, it's got a pub. It's called the Winchester. It is the Winchester. Hang on. You 
you know, I, I want to take this opportunity to, to let the people know how they can contact our friends of Frame by Frame. They do that podcast You thing. know, two guys, yeah, they do the podcast, okay? So yeah, how... They're, they're nice, they're, they're like a forest, which is a beautiful thing. Exactly. And so if you want to, to, to do the communicating thing, you know, the social networking uh, thing... Yeah, you can yeah. Uh, you can tweet those guys tweet? at Frame by Frame 78. If you'd like to go to the website, that will be www.roastedportions.com. You don't need to do the www. It's implied that it's going to be the World Wide Web. The people need to know that. Okay, just go to roastedportions.com, okay? You go down on the right-hand side, you've got the social connections. You can you can talk to the people who do the show. You can even talk to uh, uh, the people who made that movie, you know, CACO3. Who'd want to talk to those mooks? I don't know, they made a pretty interesting movie, right? It was in black and white. Yeah, black and white. I yeah, like you know, that. We like black and white because and there was also some trees in that movie too. Oh trees, it's like like being in a forest which is a beautiful thing. Other connections, you can really get to know these people on YouTube as well, and if you want to comment on their on their podcast, I urge you to do that. Okay? Yeah, I think it is a, a proper, really nice thing if people want to start contacting these Subscribe guys. Subscribe to them and, and, and com comment. I mean, it's just, just polite, you know. Also, you can email them at framebyframe78 at gmail.com. That's it. I think that's everything wrapped up, so. Hey, I'm going to I'm gonna go and plant a tree somewhere. Okay, you go plant some trees. I'm, I'm going to go, go and plant a tree. I'm going to go tweet. You tweet, I'll plant a tree. It's us, we're out of here.